The year was 1998 in the tranquil seaside community of Seren Harbor, perched along the edge of the enormous Pacific Ocean, when the planet still had pockets of unknown wonder. Within this peaceful hamlet lived three daring souls, Alex Reynolds, Emily Miller, and Daniel Carter, whose insatiable hunger for adventure would propel them into a saga that would forever carve their names in Seren Harbor's annals. The town itself embodied its maritime environs, the lullaby of calm waves crashing on the shore and the salty breeze were constants in its inhabitants' lives. This oceanic romance, however, was intertwined with a sense of gloom. People told stories about big ships arriving on moonlit evenings, sailors lost to the depths and whispers of a giant sea creature prowling the deep. Alex Reynolds, a tall figure with unbounded curiosity, had eyes that glistened with the sea's reflection. His laughing was infectious and uncontrollable, like a symphony of the waves. Emily Miller, a model of grace and tenacity, had a look that combined the ferocity of a storm with the serenity of quiet waters. Her grin, as bright as the sun breaking through the morning mist, disguised a soul as tenacious as the tides. Then Daniel Carter, a philosopher among adventurers, radiated a contemplative atmosphere. His words contained the wisdom of old sailors, and his mere presence offered a calm reminiscent of seaweed swaying in ocean currents. The trio met at the harbor one spring morning, their gaze riveted on the endless azure ocean that stretched before them. The map, a ragged parchment from a bygone era, spread between them, tracing a trail to a dark sea surface believed to contain dangerous sea creatures. This quest sparked their adventure, which would later lead them to an encounter with a massive hammerhead shark. The boat they were in, a dilapidated fishing boat, swung gently in the rhythmic embrace of waves. The sun stretched its golden arms over the bay as they set sail, engulfing it in a warm embrace. A fragrant reminder of their symbiotic link with the sea lingered in the air, the tang of salt. The creaking of the boat appeared to weave a lament, a siren's cry that tempted them into both thrill and uncertainty. The horizon seemed to grow with each nautical mile traveled, straining the boundaries of their known world. Conversations mingled with exciting narratives and contemplative silences in the air. Their stories paralleled the tide's ebb and flow, reminiscing about childhood ambitions, the pull of undiscovered places, and the irrepressible human will to impact the world. The boat sailed on as the sun set, coloring the sky with amber and rose hues, toward a destination that would rewrite their stories. Stars appeared like ancient celestial sentinels as night unfurled its obsidian canvas. Their glistening reflections danced across the ocean's surface, creating a cosmic dance that mimed the diver's impending journey. Emily traced her fingers through the water, leaving glowing trails in her wake, a momentary touch that would soon reverberate with tremendous importance. A minor shift in the currents sent ripples through the water near the coordinates inscribed on the map. The temperature appeared to drop and there was a calm tension beneath the surface, a foreshadowing of a collision of two worlds. Flashlights pierced the night, revealing a shipwreck, an eerie panorama of history frozen in time. The dark scene of the ocean had a melancholy beauty to it, a remnant of some dark explorations whose echoes remained in the ocean's depths. The divers felt as if they were decoding the whispers of long-dead mariners, as they negotiated the tortuous passages, a mournful symphony of ancient times. A figure suddenly emerged from the shadows in the middle of this underwater dark space, the sound of a hammerhead shark. Its body radiated primitive majesty, its obsidian eyes fixed on the divers with a potent blend of curiosity and dominance. The trio's hearts beat faster, a mixture of awe and dread. A ballet between predator and prey proceeded, resulting in a symphony of motions. The hammerhead swam through the water with streamlined ease, a manifestation of ages of evolution. However, its movements were not purely instinctual. As it neared, the divers felt a paradox, a link with a primordial force and an unfathomable sentience that eluded their comprehension. Then the hammerhead started charging forward, its maw gaping, an incarnation of primordial ferocity. Chaos erupted as the divers struggled with the foe as old as time motivated by terror and survival instinct. Flashlights illuminated the raging sea, generating fleeting shadows that seemed to build their own story within the aquatic battleground. Amid the chows, 
Alex noticed a window of opportunity. He measuredly moved across the water, mimicking the hammerhead's dance. A quick touch against its flank took aback the predator, a trace, an invisible connection that bridged their separate worlds, casting doubt on instinct's infallibility. This unexpected alliance shook the hammerhead's resolve. Emily and Daniel embraced the opportunity quickly, their motions synchronizing in a survival choreography. The shark's withdrawal was fast, but with reluctant respect for its rival's persistence. It vanished into the ocean's depths with a final undulating glide, leaving the divers to grapple with the intoxicating stew of victory and amazement. The moon batted the bay in silver brilliance as the trio resurfaced, an otherworldly greeting to their return. A crowd of townspeople gathered on the beach, their faces illuminated by lantern light, a congregation united by shared excitement and unsaid solidarity. The ship glided back to port, symbolizing their return to solid ground. Among the joyous cheers and embraces, the divers exchanged a wordless glance, a testament to the profundity of their voyage. They had journeyed into the ocean's center, confronted the hammerhead's might, and returned with a tale to tell, a story engraved in memory and shared with their community that illustrated the meeting of humans in the wild. Their journey would later become a symbol of unity throughout Saran Harbor's history. The ocean might remain unknown, but the divers' experiences connect with a universal reality. They danced with the abyss, emerging not as conquerors, but as beneficiaries of its ancient wisdom. A wisdom that echoed through the waves and stayed in the hearts of all who listened. In the summer of 2007, three individuals embarked on a diving journey off the coast of Santa Catalina Island, California, that would forever etch their names into the annals of diving lore. The three were John Andrews, a marine biologist with a zest for the unknown, Nicole White, a passionate underwater photographer, and Kevin Gilbert, a fascinating dive teacher. The three set out to investigate the exciting beauty of the Pacific Ocean's depths. Their journey started aboard a ship known as the AquaQuest, which was captained by an elderly and seasoned man named Captain Reynolds. A day filled with discoveries and exciting experiences lay ahead, as indicated by the sun's strokes of glittering gold on the sea's surface. As the three of them fiddled with their equipment, it was clear that they were giddy with excitement. The world beneath the waves had always had a particular fascination for them, but that day held the possibility of pushing those limits further and learning some of the ocean's beautiful species. They fell into the Cobalt Abyss, where they found a bustling underwater metropolis after being dragged there by the fall. There were schools of fish swimming in a hypnotic pattern and the sight of their brilliant colors was mesmerizing. A touch of enchantment was added to the picture by the appearance of sea turtles and the elusive manta rays. On the other hand, the deeper they plunged into the ocean, the more the water took on an eerie quiet. Around 100 feet below the water's surface, they found themselves amid an underwater graveyard of corals. The corals lay there like antiques that most people had forgotten, caught in time's grip. The shutter on Nicole's camera continued to click, capturing the eerie beauty of the setting. They were oblivious to the presence of the menacing apparition that waited for them in the shadows, an enormous hammerhead shark. As they went further, the group of four fell into an eerie silence. The vibrant marine life in their immediate vicinity had vanished, leaving an unsettling void behind. Kevin pointed out a slight expansion, and his gut instinct told him that disruption was coming soon. But before they could answer, a colossal hammerhead surfaced from the depths, its svelte form moving effortlessly through the water. It appeared time had stopped moving as the enormous beast got closer. It seemed inevitable that John, Nicole, and Kevin would only need to work together. Therefore, the three of them immediately formed a defensive formation with their flippers. When they finally saw the mammoth, their hearts started racing and adrenaline began to surge. Tensing their muscles, they maintained their posture beneath the waves. It was a picture of resoluteness, juxtaposed with precariousness. The shark continued to approach them, clearly displaying its inquisitive nature as it continuously circled the area. The coordinated movements of the divers appeared to attract the creature's curiosity, and it seemed to be watching closely. As they stood in their position, it was a complicated dance between the hunter and the hunted, and the minutes seemed to drag on forever. After that, the hammerhead returned to where it had come from, 
disappearing back into the abyss just as quickly as it had emerged. When the divers finally surfaced and could breathe fresh air, they were astonished at the intensity of the encounter. They had come face to face with a dangerous creature from the depths, a testament to their courage and respect for the splendors of the ocean. Following their return to AquaQuest, the sun went below the horizon, resulting in a tranquil and dramatic landscape reflecting the events that had just transpired. The drama surrounding them became public knowledge a few days later. The community there was enthralled by the photographs and film taken and shown to them during that terrifying encounter, which transported them to the depths of the ocean's darkness. John, Nicole, and Kevin shared their story about being submerged in the unknown and emerging with a more profound appreciation for the complexity of the ocean after telling it. Their experience acted as a cautionary tale and a timely reminder that human endurance can be tested in various contexts, including the realm of adventure. After some time, each of the divers went their separate ways. John continued his research while also advocating for maritime environment protection. The photography has been featured on the covers of reputable periodicals, serving as a visual tribute to the marvels of the water. While this happened, Kevin's job as a well-known diving instructor involved more than just teaching his students how to dive. He also instilled in them the humility that comes with facing the unbridled might of nature. The three people still need to defeat the hammerhead shark in the grand scheme. Instead, they were connected to the core of the ocean, an area that demanded respect from them and tested their understanding. As the sun descended below the horizon on that once-in-a-lifetime voyage, the abyss, which had been indelibly branded by the creatures who had made it their home, was left in the rearview mirror. The divers eventually lost contact with one another over the years, but their shared experience ensured they would always be connected. John Andrews, now widely recognized as an expert in marine biology, devoted his entire life to understanding the intricate ecosystems in the ocean. He traveled to some of the most inaccessible regions on Earth to meet with researchers and locals to discuss potential long-term remedies to the delicate ecological balance. The mesmerizing photographs Nicole White took continued to captivate those who viewed them. Through her lens, White captured the unique beauty of the marine environment and the essential role that the environment plays in marine life's survival. Her work was critical in gaining public support for initiatives aimed at protecting maritime environments. Her knowledge was sought after by governmental agencies and nonprofit organizations, chronicling the precarious condition of coral reefs, the massive migrations of marine species, and the disturbing growth in the amount of pollution caused by plastic. Kevin Gilbert was pleasantly surprised by the success of his dive school, which surpassed all of his expectations. He led his students on adventures beyond the thrill of merely discovering new things. Under his direction, they were taught how to dive while understanding humans' impact on the oceans. Kevin passed on his passion for ocean conservation to many former students who pursued careers as marine biologists, activists, and educators. A decade had passed since their incredible experience when they found themselves back in each other's company through coincidental events. One of the most well-known documentary filmmakers in the world was moved by their story and approached the three of them with the idea of developing a feature film about the beauty and fragility of the oceans. They were looking forward to cooperating, so they embarked on a new journey to take them to the depths they had already investigated. The film brought them worldwide, from the breathtakingly beautiful kelp forests of the Pacific Northwest to the dazzling coral reefs of the Great Barrier Reef. Their experiences under the sea were a jubilant dance of reminiscences they'd shared and discoveries. Together with marine biologists and environmental activists, they looked into issues affecting the ocean, such as overfishing, climate change, the destruction of habitat, and pollution. As they continued to investigate the underwater world, the three friends drew closer to one another. They reminisced about the momentous day that had transpired in the waters off the coast of Santa Catalina Island, the meeting that had set each of them off on their paths of ocean activism. Their bond was as unchanging as the tides, and each represented a glimmer of optimism in a world where the oceans were up against tremendous obstacles. The viewers met the documentary with critically acclaimed upon its release. The journey the three friends took captivated audiences worldwide 
and their story became a monument to the force of human will and the transformative potential of nature. The documentary Beneath the Surface was given a suitable title, was the impetus for a worldwide effort to conserve the oceans. Protecting ocean habitats prompted governments to respond by passing stricter regulations. As they stood together on the desolate beach, the waves gently lapped at their feet, and they shared a reflective moment of silence. The sun descended below the horizon, leaving a kaleidoscope of glowing hues throughout the heavens. They realized their journey was not over during that lull in the action. The water continued to hold both fantastic and dangerous species, and its depths were still waiting to be explored. And they would continue to explore, conserve, and inspire others, fueled by the unyielding enthusiasm that drove them. It was an unstoppable force for the wild beauty that lay dormant beneath the surface. In 2004, three courageous individuals embarked on a journey that would permanently bind them to the alluring embrace of the ocean. This journey began along the tranquil coastline of Eldenport, a charming fishing community that the hurried pace of contemporary life had not yet impacted. Zach Reynolds, an underwater photographer with the soul of an artist. Anthony Mercer, a seasoned diving instructor with a vigilant eye. And Samuel Mitchell, a marine geologist motivated by an insatiable curiosity, created an unbreakable relationship through their shared passion for the sea. Eldenport was a town on the coast of the enormous Pacific Ocean. It was the location where the flow of life was in perfect sync with the tides. As the summer painted the horizon with warm hues, the three friends got themselves ready to dive into the depths, anxious to discover the beauties of the sea and take in its wondrous sights for themselves. They were sinking deeper and deeper into the azure chasm with every stroke of their flippers. The sunlight played across the water's surface, creating mesmerizing patterns that led the way into the core of the underwater world. The ocean greeted them with open arms, revealing a brilliant aquatic tapestry beyond human imagination. Their exploration brought them to a hidden underwater cave system, whose limestone structures were mute witnesses to the natural artistry crafted over many years. Zack's camera captured the vivid kaleidoscope of colors that graced the cave's interior, while Samuel's trained eyes read the geological tale inscribed upon the rock. They proceeded farther into the maze, guided by Antony's prior knowledge, their senses tingling with the excitement of the prospect of discovery. As they proceeded with their exploration, they found more nooks and crannies that concealed relics from a distant era. As Samuel discovered fossilized shells and impressions of marine creatures engraved into the walls, his joy could be felt through the cave. These artifacts provided an insight into the inhabitants of the old ocean. These fleeting moments have been captured forever by Zack's camera, which, like a painter's brush, created a visual homage to the ocean's enduring allure. Antony's continuous presence provided security, which served as a steady hand to guide them through the complex maze of passageways. As they proceeded further into the cavern, the passing of the hours became a captivating dance with time. During their investigation, Antony's observant sight landed on another cave concealed within. The cave had small fish species that wandered around. A faint murmur echoed through the water, and it was almost as if the ocean itself was telling ancient stories and imparting its knowledge. The sea creatures appeared to be pausing for a while before moving about. Samuel's analytical mind and Zack's creative spirit clashed in astonishment at the small, beautiful cave. Both were in awe of its beauty. Antony, a wise man of the sea, was the first to realize that the cave was significant in a way that went beyond the duties each played individually. The entrance of a magnificent hammerhead shark disrupted their contemplation at that precise moment, and all the small fish species suddenly fled away. The creature's existence was a demonstration of the raw strength and elegance that the ocean possesses. The creature's sleek body glided effortlessly through the water. The divers were amid a living representation of the sea's beauty when the shark entered, which instilled a sense of astonishment rather than apprehension. The three people started their rise slowly while showing mutual respect for one another. Their actions were in time with the beat of the waves. The eyes of the shark followed them, a quiet acceptance of the fact that they were traveling together. After breaking through the water's surface, they emerged above, where the pleasant warmth of the sun and the soothing music of waves met them. The tale of their run-in spread like wildfire across Eldenport, becoming entwined in conversations throughout the entire community. 
The elders gathered to tell stories about the wonders of the sea, and one of the topics they discussed was the hammerhead sharks that had been swimming in these seas for many years. As the villagers understood how intricately their lives were linked to the rise and fall of the tides, the village's view of the ocean grew stronger. The experience ushered in for Samuel, Zach, and Antony, the beginning of a love affair that would last them their entire lives with the beauty of the ocean. They continued their journey, growing closer together due to their shared experiences. Every dive was a reminder of the delicate dance between humans and the sea, a realization that the sea was not only a backdrop to their existence, but a companion on their journey. As the years went by, Eldenport continued to serve as a haven for people fascinated by the water's beauties. The story of the divers was woven into the fabric of the community, serving as a constant reminder that the ocean should not be fought against, but instead embraced. As the villagers stared toward the horizon, they saw the boundless expanse of water and a reflection of their connectivity. This relationship had existed for generations. They mirrored the unchanging rhythms of the ocean. As a result, Samuel, Zach, and Antony's adventure continued to be told, serving as a living witness to the enduring power of human curiosity and the ever-present embrace of the ocean. Eldenport prospered thanks to its residents' awareness that the sea housed wonders, sources of amazement, and ideas they would never discover. As the sun descended below the horizon, it mirrored the village's enduring link with the ocean's depths in the golden colors cast by the setting light. The waves seemed to murmur stories of adventures that had been taken, 